Hey guys and welcome back to my channel, Blue Nose Trading. My name is Tori Solis and today I'm going to be going over an entire series of creating closed form jars that I'm going to throw as closed forms on the wheel. So basically I'm just going to throw up a cylinder and then slowly coax it over until it closes off. I'm going to make several of these. I'm going to sculpt them into different little creatures and then some of them are just going to be jars. This is kind of just a personal practice series. I haven't really made many jars. I made like one in a class and I wanted to practice and see so I'm making just a whole bunch of them right now. This is going to be a very long series. There's probably six pieces or so that are going to be all thrown and then all trimmed and I don't know how to make this any faster for y'all so maybe we could just listen to some really chill music while this gets done and then I'll talk when important things happen because like me talking for 20 minutes straight I just don't see that happening so it's either like cut out parts of the process for you or we're gonna just chill and listen to music so Once I get these centered on the wheel, when they're ready to trim, I'm going to just use my needle tool. I think I started with my needle tool, and then I switched over to like a little knife tool to cut them open at an angle so that the lid fits in. So creating a lid out of the top, and then just using the trim tools to smooth things out, trim feet at the bottom, and get it all nice and smooth so that it's a nice flush fit jar. Well, the best that it can be, depending on which jar we're talking about. I didn't really go into this project with any kind of plan of what these jars were going to be. I mostly just let the shapes kind of happen as they happened and as I was feeling them out. And then I'm going to make them into things based off of what I kind of see when I look at them. This one is going to be an owl. A few of these might just be regular jars and I think I'm going to try to make a fish as well and maybe even a chicken. The clay I'm working with here is Trinity Spectacular. It's one of my favorite clays from Trinity Ceramic Supply in Dallas. They mix it in-house here. It's a really, really nice speckled buff with big speckles. It's one of my favorite clays to work with, so I'm using that for this project here because I'm really comfortable with it. Now that I've gotten everything trimmed, I'm just going to let it dry slowly for a little bit under some plastic on my wear boards. And then once it's dried to a pretty decent point of leather hard, I'm going to come back in and I'm going to trim. Well, not trim, we already trimmed, but I'm going to carve decorations and do some sculpting onto these. Every single one is going to be different. I didn't really have much of a plan going into it other than I was just going to feel it out as I went. So this is me filling it out as I go. 
This jar with the spiral feels like where I manifested every bad idea that I had while I was doing this project. <laughs> I don't like the carvings much. It's not my favorite. For this perfectly round one, I think I'm going to turn this one into a chicken. A little hen pot. So I'm going to make it just like all the others, only the head is going to be the lid to the jar. So I'll make her feathers one by one and then sculpt out her comb and her face and make a little chicken. I have my process sped up to like 35 times to 50 times speed here for a lot of it and it's still just such a long process but I want to share everything that goes into making these with y'all so thank goodness that we have some really really nice chill beats to listen to while this goes down. So I've been driving into Dallas for work for the past few months and when I'm coming into Dallas most often the sun is also coming up at the same time as I'm coming up over a hill to look at the skyline. So I've just been really inspired by like seeing that skyline and how pretty it is in the mornings and I love the pigeons that live downtown. They make me so happy. So for this one I put the skyline, like I carved the silhouette of the skyline into the jar and then the little handle knob on top is going to be a pigeon. I think this one's going to work out really cute. But that's kind of directly where I got that inspiration from. I don't know if I'll make a ton of these but I had to scratch like an artistic itch. This next one here, I'm going to do some of my crater texture. It's a texture I really enjoy, so I'm just going to, I've got an idea here. I'm going to carve the crater texture into the bottom, and then I'm going to sculpt a knobby little handle for the top of the lid that also kind of looks like a stone. And then I want to glaze this with something that's going to make it really shiny, so it'll look like a little gemstone treasure trinket jar. This one's going to be quite small, but also quite adorable up and finishing here for this one to smooth it out a little bit. I think for this one I'm going to turn it into a goldfish. 
like one of those bubble-eyed goldfish that has the really crazy eyes from the pet store. Those are my, some of my favorites. Actually, I, I love goldfish. I keep a whole fish tank full of fancy goldfish. I really love pearl scales and telescopes and uh, crown pearl scales and ranchus and ryukens. I, I just, I love goldfish actually. Can't lie about it. And I worked at a fish store for a really, really long time and it's, it's really funny because you work at a fish store and you experience what it's like to keep all sorts of freshwater and saltwater fish and then once you're done with that experience and you have all that knowledge you go, alright, I'm gonna keep my goldfish now because you know what? The goldfish are happy. They are so chill and so hardy and easy to take care of and they need bigger tanks than most people think. I only have two to three goldfish at any given time in a 55 gallon aquarium but they're so happy. Whenever I get a new goldfish, everyone's just like, Oh, hey, bud, welcome to the club, man. We're all here to hang out. Like, nobody wants to fight. No one's bullying anybody. It's just, it's big peace, love, and chill energy in the goldfish tank, and I respect them for that. On the other hand, I also keep a betta fish on my desk, and I don't keep him in a jar. He's in a 15-gallon planted aquarium, everybody. Be calm. We know what we're doing here. Um, and he is super happy, but he's also a vicious fighting machine, so I guess that, you know, you have to have both energies in your life to be fully satisfied. Once these pieces have been bisqued, we are going to glaze them. And I'm going to hand paint these, usually a lot of stroking coats because I don't feel like playing games with them right now, and my friend is going to have to fire them for me in his kiln, and I don't want to play games with this kiln either. So we are going to just use some of these Mako stroke and coats to paint these. There is more or less no chance that this goldfish is going to be for sale because I'm probably going to keep this for myself. I've been loving it since the it came out of the bisque so sometimes you know it's for me. These weren't part of much anyway outside of just being a kind of side project. Some of this stuff is going to go to the show, but it's going to depend. The The owl is working out perfectly, but again, if the owl comes out perfect, you know, I don't know, I might just have to keep it. In decorating this owl specifically, I am trying to style it after the burrowing owl, or Athene cunicularia. Sorry if I said that wrong, I did my best. So it's like this really, really, really cute little desert owl. They like hop around, they're really small. Definitely 10 out of 10 would recommend burrowing owls to a friend. So with that design in mind, I'm going to be making it a really sandy color, some nice bright golden eyes, and then a nice, some white tips around the edges, and overall just a nice sandy colored brown like the burrowing owl is represented in nature. The chicken came out of the bisque with two of her little feathers on the top part kind of chipped. I'm going to glaze the chicken in a similar style that I've done in the past. Since she's speckled, I love using the raw clay as just its own kind of appearance. And then I'm just going to apply a glaze of, for this case, I'm going to use a dark kind of chestnut brown. And I'm going to lighten it up a little bit by mixing in some yellow. And I'm going to use that to line the edges of all of her feathers. I'm just going to use a liner paintbrush to achieve that. And then her beak is going to be orange, her comb is going to be red, and her eyes are going to be black. And then the rest of her will be a really nice speckled color to fill in all in. And she should have a really great combination of shiny and matte textures. For the pigeon jar with the Dallas skyline underneath, I am going to use some stroking coats to paint the pigeon pigeon colors. And then down at the bottom, I'm going to use a 
metallic glaze and kind of move that around because I made a mess. And these are out of the kiln and I'm ready to look over each of them with you one by one. First off, everything came out pretty great. Starting with the Dallas skyline that has the pigeon on top. The pigeon is very pigeon colored and the skyline came out pretty great. I could get the glazing up a little tighter here, but overall this is a really good jar and the concept is really close to what I had in my own mind when I made it. This guy is just unfortunate. He's unfortunate all the way around. I'm, you know, I'm sharing him with you so that you can see that they're not all winners. The spirals are so elementary and the jar is just kind of meh. And when I threw it, I kind of make mistakes. It doesn't have a perfect seal between the lid and the jar. It's just meh. The chicken would have been remarkable. She really would have been great, except for she got some damage here on her scales in the back. So overall, all around, I mean, she's a really, really nice piece, and I am going to have her available as a second. But since she received some damage real close here on the lid where I'm pointing to, she is going to be a second for that reason. Which is a bummer because she was such a nice piece, but, you know, she's a really nice second. This is fine. I don't know, I keep messing with this floating copper, hoping it's going to do something nice for me, and it's just kind of boring. But overall, this is a very functional jar, and it's... It's all right. It's all right. This, this one's phenomenal. I'm so sorry, but I'm going to have to keep it at least for a while. It's going to sit in my office and look at me. It's so cute all the way around. And then the fun, most fun part is that you can take off the head and you can put the head on in any way and you're never wrong because it's an owl and they do that. And that is just wonderful. I base this off of a burrowing owl. I don't think I mentioned that earlier, but it, it looks really great. It's a cute little burrowing owl. This one came out way better than the one with the copper. The crater collected up the cobalt, and then the lid, lid collected the cobalt really well. So this is just a little floating cobalt trinket jar. This next one here, I don't know what happened here, man. This is campfire, and normally it's really pretty and has crystal growth in it, but it just matted over and got metallic so like it's fine for what it is but it didn't meet my expectations of what I was trying to make it so that is all right just a dog treat jar this this is mine it is so cute I know we went on a rant for a while about how awesome fancy goldfish are and I'm gonna make more of these but I think I'm gonna put this one tentatively is my entry for the state fair this year so if you want to see how that turns out and a weekly art video in general, subscribe to my channel, Blue Nose Trading. If you'd like to help support my channel and help me make this channel happen, you can find me at patreon.com slash bluenosetrading. Remember that you are important and you have great ideas. Drink lots of water and I will see you next week.